Okay, so at this point we have a game that works. We're able to put X's and O's. We're able to determine when somebody wins, but we can still move after the game is over. You know, if I go ahead and make a X win here, I can still move. And you know, there's a couple of other issues too. It doesn't seem fair that X gets to go first all the time, so we should do something about that as well. So let's start off by preventing the uh, preventing the moves after somebody has already won the game. Uh, we'll go ahead and create another variable. Let's call this variable document.winner. We'll set it equal to null. And document.winner is going to be a variable that we're going to use to determine who's won the game. Null is just a value that means there's nothing. Nothing is there. It's not an empty value. It's just nothing. It's never been defined. Uh, and We'll use that variable. We can use that just like a true false down here. Uh, uh, we can, in our next move, you know, we can check if square inner, in, before we even check if the square's inner text is empty, we can say if document.winner equals null, let's set a message. And we'll say document.winner already won the game. Yeah, I have an error here. My plus is inside my text instead of outside of my text. And another error, and it spelled already right, but that's okay. We'll fix that. And then we can just add an else right here. So if document.winner is null, or I'm sorry, is not equal to null, then we say this person already won the game. So now we're checking not only to see if that square is empty, but we're also checking to see if the game is over. So we're going to use this document winner. We've already set it to null, but we also want to see you know, who's the winner. So when we have a winner in our switch turn, we'll go ahead and set document.winner equal to document.turn. So now we can say, all right, we're going to tell whoever, this, whoever just won, we're going to set that as the winner. And if I hit refresh and I get X to win here, then X already won the game. We can't make any more moves. So that's good. That seems a lot more reasonable, but you know we still have this problem that X always gets to go first. So in our start game, we're gonna do something here. We're gonna introduce some randomness. Uh, so let's go ahead and say if we're going to call a function here that's built in, and it's called math.random. And math.random will give me a number that is between 0 and 1. You know, so it could be 0 0.1, it could be 0 0.2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 4, 1, 2. It could be a lot of different numbers in between 0 and 1. And if we want to make sure that O gets to go half of the go first half of the time, I'm going to go ahead and say if math.random is less than 0 0.5, because half of the random numbers between 0 and 1 are going to be less than ha 0.5, and half of them are going to be greater than 0.5. So we're going to go ahead and set document.turn equal to O. So now we, if we refresh the page, we see O gets the start. We can see X gets the start. If we keep refreshing the page, it should switch back and forth about 50-50. Now, it's not going to always be one or the other. It's not going to go back and forth, but we'll see. You know, if we refresh the page a hundred times, it's probably going to be about fifty times X goes to or X gets to go first, and fifty times O gets to go first. So there'd be one more nice thing, and that would be what if I could just keep playing without having to hit that refresh button over and over and over again? It'd be kind of nice. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing we're going to need to do in order to uh, to uh, refresh the game is we're gonna have to clear out all the boxes because if we already have all these boxes filled in you know we we can't really play anymore so we're gonna create a new function and we're going to call this function clear box and it's gonna look a lot like our get box function we're gonna say document give me element called s plus that number and we're gonna set the inner text equal to an empty string here, an empty bit of text. So clear box will clear that value. And you know what we're going to do is right up here 
in our start game, we could actually reuse this function so that every time we want to restart, we could just clear the whole game board. Uh, it's already setting the user's turn. It's already kind of fairly determining who gets to go. It's clearing my winner, and it's telling me who gets to start. So all I have to do now to reuse this to clear out to start over completely is clear out the game board. Now I could do something like clear box one, clear box two. Oh, but that would be really tedious. Now, fortunately, JavaScript has a way for us to avoid that kind of tedious writing. So it's something called a for loop. And what a for loop allows us to do is repeat something over and over again. So I'm going to say for ver, ver uh, i equals 1 as long as it's less than or equal to 9. And we're going to add 1 to it each time. We're going to clear box i. So what this is going to do is it's going to start off with i equal to 1. And as long as i is less than or equal to 9, we're going to clear this box. And every time we finish, we're going to add 1 to i. So if we come back over here and hit refresh, yeah, it looks pretty much the same, right? We don't have a way to call back to start game. So let's create a new, uh, a new tag down here right after our table. We'll call this A, which gives us the ability to create a link. And we'll go ahead and have this call a JavaScript function, start game. And we'll call it start over. And now, when we refresh the page again, we'll have a link down here. And that will let us start over, over and over and over. So X, O, X, O, X, O, X, O. Okay, O wins, O won the game, let's start over. And now we can have a fully functioning game. X and O can both play, and they can start over, over and over and over again. So at this point, you've got a game that works, and you've got something you can actually use and point to and say, this is something that I built. Now, there are a lot of other things you might be able to do here. You might be able to try to write some code to see if you can... Uh, Make this keep score from game to game and tell you how many people, how many times x1 versus how many times o1. Uh, you could do some, write some code to try to change things up and make the x's and o's different colors. Uh, you could, you could do lots of things to try to make the the computer play one of the moves and just put a put something into a box, uh, you know, one through nine. Uh, so there is a lot of room to kind of customize this and do additional things to it. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed the exercise, and I hope that you know, you've know you learned a little bit about programming and, and learned enough to know that you would like to do some more of this. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, good luck on your, uh, on your future programming study.